Eric Owens leading off for the Padres comes in hitting 338 at eighth best in the National League and takes a strike. Steve Ripley, believe it or not, is the plate umpire. Tim Cheetah at first base, Chuck Merriweather at second, and Greg Gibson at third. Get in there. Pop fly headed for center field and dropping in there for a base hit. Well, Eric Owens was saying after last night's game that he really loves to come back to Cincinnati and play well against his old club. He felt that he was shortchanged by them, never got a proper opportunity here. And he has played quite well coming into this game, hitting 345 this year off his old club, and he drops a base hit into center field to start the game. Damian Jackson up for the first time. Ground ball in the hole. Larkin up with it. Fires to second in time. Barry Larkin still showing pretty good range at the age of 36. Owens is forced at second. Damian Jackson reaches on a fielder's choice. I actually thought it was going to be a lot closer at second base. Larkin doing a great job. On this turf, he gets the true hop. Almost stutter steps right there. And a good slide by Eric Owens. The two middle infielders, Polky Reese and Barry Larkin, are perfectly suited to playing on the Astro turf. They're both very quick, have good first steps, tremendous range. And you need that here on the turf where the ball gets through the infield so quickly. Ed Sprague getting a start tonight at first base. He takes a ball from Vallone. Sprague hitting 296 with 10 homers, 24 runs batted in. Damian Jackson at first base. He's been picked off a couple of times this year, so he's going to have to be careful. Fouled back by Sprague, one and one. And you can see Valone will vary his moves. He used a kind of half leg kick right there. He was very quick to the plate before he threw the ball to Damian Jackson. He's picked off four runners already this year. Last year he picked off six. Very quick slide step to the plate. And the move to first chases Damian Jackson back. Damian has 11 stolen bases. Second on the club to Eric Owens who has 18. Jackson at least for now has lost his starting shortstop job to rookie Kevin Nicholson but it looks like he's going to see a lot of action in left field when the Padres face a left handed pitcher because Al Martin the regular left fielder is not hitting lefties at all and I like that for DJ especially in being in left field I think it'll be to the Padres advantage because of his speed you really don't have to worry about his arm all too much because it's a shorter throw to third base than it is from center or right field I think he should do okay out there in left. And Sprague hits one to deep left field, but didn't get enough of it. And Dimitri Young makes the catch as Jackson goes back to first. Ball didn't carry quite as far as I thought it would when it left the bat. Thought that ball would have found the gap a little bit further. Looks like from the sound of the bat, though, got in a little bit and Ed Sprague. So two quick outs here for Ron Vallone. And the cleanup hitter, Phil Nevin, coming up. Phil went 0 for 4 last night. It's only hitting 192 for the month of June. Up the middle and Larkin can't get it through for a base hit. Damian Jackson heading for third and look for a moment like Griffey might try to make a play on him but he's in safely. Well, first and third situation with two outs and Brett Boone coming up. Well that's why on turf like you mentioned earlier Mel you have to have some good range at second base and shortstop Larkin gives a valiant effort right here at this ball smoked up the middle by Phil Nevin going after that low ball look at the one hopper just out of the range of Larkin and then DJ is going to test the arm of junior no nope, junior just plays it safe gets it in there. Well, Brett Boone hoping that he has something left after last night's performance hitting three home runs driving in six runs. Second time in his career, he's hit three home runs in a game. Takes a high slider for a ball. Boone, the fifth major leaguer this year to hit three home runs in a single game. Mark McGuire, Alex Rodriguez, Todd Helton, and Kevin Elster have all done it.
Fastball catches the outside corner. In the 10th inning last night, Reds manager Jack McKeon made the decision to walk Brett Boone, which certainly made sense, but then Ruben Rivera came up with two men on and hit a three-run homer that proved to be the difference in the game. And Valone steps off the rubber. Ron Valone, a relief pitcher for most of his career, became a starter last year at the age of 29. Chopped foul. Well, I remember Ron Valone when he first came up to the big leagues. He was nothing but a thrower. He would get that ball and just throw it as hard as he could. But over the years, has to realize that he's not going to blow the ball by everybody, develop an off speed pitch, and especially as a starter, using all four curveball, slider, changeup, he'll sink it. High fly ball to right, and Dante Bichette is there. Strike one. One thing about Matt, he likes starting at night. He's gone three and four with a 2 7 ERA. Holding opponents to a 2.12 average. Boy, they've got stats for everything, don't they? Midday, morning, nighttime. Good slider. And it's 0-2 to Reese, who was supposed to have last night off. Chris Stein started at second base and had two hits, his first two trips to the plate, but pulled a hamstring, and Reese had to go in and play. He went one for three with a run batted in while he was in there. But he's been playing just about every day, and he's been kind of worn down, so Jack McKeon wanted to give him the night off. One and two to Pokey. I think another key for Matt Clement tonight is not only getting ahead of these Reds hitters, but putting them away early when he has them 0 2. 1 2, maybe put them away right here. Don't work the count to the hitter's favor after having them in the hole. Slider low, 2 and 2 to Pokey Reese, who got off to a great start and made the 13th. He was hitting 338, but since then, he's hitting just 214. So you want to see some action right here Mel 2 2 you don't want to bring the count to 3 2 and have them go for the punch out or have them hit the ball on the ground somewhere. Well, Matt Clement had him 0 and 2 and now it's 3 and 2 and Reese is the guy who can do some damage on the bases if he gets on he has 18 stolen bases. Slider whacked into left field for a base hit. That slider kind of flattened out on Matt Clement. Sometimes when he drops his arm, that'll happen. And Reese is aboard. He stays put on the first pitch. A ball to Barry Larkin. Larkin with two hits and five at bats last night comes in hitting 306. Hard ground ball up the middle, another base hit. Well, back to back singles by Pokey Reese and Barry Larkin to set the table for Ken Griffey Jr. Not a good way to start. You know, we talked about the other day, Jack McKeon talking about Jr., hoping that he'd get some big hits. Well, this is a perfect opportunity for Jr. to come through with first and second. Matt Clement kind of shies away from that one hopper. The ball's going to skip hard on this turf. I'd like to see Matt Clement maybe try to get in front of that ball, at least knock it down, keep it in the infield to get a chance to get an out. So Ken Griffey Jr. is beginning to heat up. He went for an 0 for 18 drought that ended June the 3rd. Since then, he's hit 333 with eight homers and 16 runs batted in. Despite the low batting average among the league leaders and homers and RBIs. And he takes a strike. Griffey last night had three hits and drove in four runs. Hit a two run homer in the fifth inning and then had a two run double in the ninth off Trevor Hoffman. You know that's a great first pitch right there by Matt Clement. Hard sinker inside had some late movement. I believe you have to get Junior out hard in and then soft stuff away late in the count. I think the slower a pitcher throws the ball to this guy he has more time to adjust and that's the way you get hurt. He pulls the ground ball foul and it's 0 2 to Griffey who's never had a hit. Only had three at bats against Clement. Not really enough to get a reading on him. Well, he's definitely made him aware of the fastball inside. Two consecutive 
Heaters in on the fists and junior trying to pull that last one he pulled it foul for strike two. Griffey with 420 career home runs fastest player ever to reach 400 homers. He's currently 27th in the all time home run list. Hard to believe he's been in the big league since 1989 when he came up at the age of 19. Foul ball. It looked like a slider down and in. Adam Eaton said he thinks Junior might have a little bit of trouble with a slider down and in or the cutter in on the fists. That's exactly what Matt Clement is trying to do right here. Not get those arms extended across the plate. Pokey Reese at second base. Barry Larkin at first. Good speed on the bases. Nobody out. Fastball is high, one and two. Line shot into center field for a base hit. Porky Reese heading home, and he will score as the Reds take the lead. So an inauspicious beginning for Matt Clement, who has given up three straight hits. And Ken Griffey Jr. picks up RBI number 55. You can see Matt Clement earlier jamming him inside. Watch how he gets his hands out and extended. That pitch outer third of the plate up above the belt. And even with the shift right there, if you elevate a ball, Jr.'s going to hit it on the line. And you can't catch that ball right there. Nobody out. Tough going for Matt Clement as that was a very very quick visit from Dave Smith. Some of the key hitters for the Reds like Ken Griffey Jr. Sean Casey and Dante Bichette all got off to slow starts but all three of them are coming around now. And Bichette steps in Bichette this month is hitting 348 he's driven in 20 runs in the month of June that's as many as he drove in in April and May combined. Still nobody out. High and inside for Bichette. You never know with Clement whether he's doing that for effect or he's just wild. <laughs> You're absolutely right. He's hit nine batters. He's tied for second in the league in that dubious category. Second in the league in walks, second in wild pitches. Slider misses, and it's 2 0 to Bichette. This is when Bichette is really dangerous, when he can sit and look for a particular pitch or a location. The guy who guesses along with the pitcher very well. Slider didn't guess too well on that one. He was looking for a fastball. Yeah, I think Dante started swinging as soon as Matt Clement got up to the release point. Way out in front and sweeping at that slider. And that's too high as he misses with a fastball. Three and one to Bichette. Strike call, three and two. Bichette had a home run off Clement in San Diego last week. And this time he's called out on strikes and a dandy slider. That's the first out of the inning as Clement made some good pitches to get him out. Well, Dante definitely guessing fastball. He didn't expect anything with a wrinkle. Matt misses with location but the speed and the location of the ball right there messes up Dante Bichette and that's a big out because now with one out there's a force at any base and a switch hitting left fielder Dimitri Young coming up hitting 274 with eight homers 36 runs batted in he has hit four home runs left handed as well as right handed way high.
Clement's got a great arm. He's got good stuff. He throws in the low 90s. Got a great slider, but his mechanics sometimes get fouled up. He just has trouble keeping his mechanics together. And that's when he gets real wild. Dave Smith has a couple of checkpoints he looks for in Clement's delivery. And if he sees things are not going right, he'll go right out there and try to straighten him out. He's already been out there once. Yeah, Matt's got a lot of moving parts with the leg kick. He swivels, brings his kick leg back towards second base. And then his body has a tendency to rush out sometimes, therefore can't get up top. He drops the elbow and works under everything. A drive to left field, and Damian Jackson on the run, pulls it down, and then drops it. But he made the catch. He dropped it after he'd made the catch. Well, Young is out. The fans are booing, but the third base umpire, Greg Gibson, did a good job of hustling down the line. And it was pretty apparent that Jackson had control of the ball. So when he tries to transfer to the throwing hand, he drops it. Yeah, good call. He was all over it. And once again, DJ showing some speed right there. That ball off the left hand and hitting Young is going to slice towards the line. So it's actually going away from Damian Jackson. So that's a big out right there for Matt Clement and the Padres. A good play by Damian. Take a base hit away from Dimitri Young. And now with two outs, Sean Casey up. Another guy who got off to a terrible start, but is starting to swing the bat well. He hit 211 in April, 213 in May, but so far in June, hitting 302 and takes a strike. In the past, when I've seen Matt Clement struggle with his fastball, I've noticed one thing. He goes to his breaking ball, and then he finds that groove. That was a first-pitch breaking ball right there by Sean Casey. This will be the 24th pitch of the first inning coming up for Clement. And a drive into left center field. Again, it's Damian Jackson. Ruben Rivera, one of the heroes last night, with a game-winning three-run homer off Scott Williamson, leading off the second inning. Was after the first pitch and skies it to right. A long run for Dante Bichette. Oh, what a play with a fan reaching over. Something flying out of there, and he makes the catch and may have hurt himself. That was a terrific play by Bichette. It almost looked like Bichette was anticipating the wall being there a little sooner than wanting to climb the wall. Look at the gloves reaching out, almost interfering with him. What great concentration right there by Dante. If he had not made the catch, I think the umpire might have called fan interference anyway. A terrific play by Bichette. The trainer out there briefly to make sure he's all right. Popped up on the left side of the infield. Aaron Boone coming in. Oh, two down and rookie Kevin Nicholson coming up. Nicholson made his major league debut last night. He was hitless in three at bats, but swung the bat pretty well. He almost hit a home run in the fourth inning. Kevin said that he is a natural right handed hitter and he started switch hitting about 16, 17 years old. And that's ball four. But Nicholson, if he hustles, maybe he can get to second base. That ball glanced off the glove of Taubenzi, who was slow to react and go after him. Nicholson was kind of jogging up the first baseline. Had he taken off, he might have at least forced Taubenzi to make a throw. I don't think he realized the ball had rolled that far away, though. It's the first walk given up by Ron Vallone. I think Taubenzi was just expecting the umpire to hand him a new ball, and then he realized, hey, it's in play. I think I saw the ball boy down there pick it up also. So you're right. Could have put some pressure on Tobinsey. Ball one to Matt Clement, who has just two hits in 27 at bats. And a strike, one and one. And this one gets by Tobinsey, and that'll put Kevin Nicholson in scoring position. That's a wild pitch. Cincinnati Reds lead the league in wild pitches. The Padres are second. Let's see what the pitch is. If it's a breaking ball, looks like it's a breaking ball. I was watching Ron Valone in the bullpen prior to the game warming up, and he bounced about two or three breaking balls right there. That's the 52nd wild pitch by the Reds. The Padres are distant second with 36.
Well, the tying run now at second base with two outs. Line foul by Clement. Fastball is high. And ironically, the 1944 Reds hold the major league record for fewest wild pitches in a season. Over 155 games that year, they had nine wild pitches. That's some good catching right there, and then some guys with a good, consistent breaking ball. Line foul, Clement hanging tough. You can see the foul ball starting to creep more towards fair territory. Matt was real behind, really behind the fastball from Valone. He lines one down the right field line, and that's foul. Just missed a base hit. He's getting closer. <laughs> and I think Valone doesn't want to throw him anything else because Matt Clement is not a good hitter. There's a runner on second base, and Eric Owens is on deck. So he wants to try to get Matt Clement right here. He doesn't want to miss with a breaking ball. Look at how close this is. He wants to face Owens next inning with nobody on. Clement fouls off another one. And he walked him. Boy, that's a good at bat for Clement. Fouling off a lot of pitches. And Valone puts him on. From Valone's standpoint, being overly cautious with Clement, who is not a good hitter. And now he's in a bit of a jam because Eric Owens, who is fourth in the league in hitting with runners in scoring position, comes up with two men on. Matt Clement really doing a good job. And I think that last pitch, Valone just tried to make too good of a pitch rather than going right after him. Owens, a 377 hitter with runners in scoring position. He had a single his first time up, a bloop into center field. He's now four for seven lifetime off Valone, and he does have a home run off of him. Way high. And Owen smokes one to left field and deep. Dimitri Young back, and it's over his head and off the wall. Nicholson in to score. And sliding into second with a double is Owens as the Padres tie it up. So Eric Owens, as he's done so often, comes through again with runners in scoring position, driving into tying run, and Matt Clement goes to third. Malone misses with location right here. It's up and in for Eric Owens. Good piece of hitting right there. I thought it was going to be out of the ballpark, but things are going well right now for Eric Owens. I should say he's two for two tonight, so he has another multi-hit game. That's his 32nd of the year. He began the day tied with Montreal's Vladimir Guerrero for the league lead in multi-hit games with 31. And here's Damian Jackson. Bounces it out to Pokey Reese, who throws him out. First pitch slider is low, Aaron. They have another brother playing in the Tigers organization, Matthew. It's a boon fest. Yes, it is. I'm sure back home in San Diego, Ray Boone, grandfather and grandmother Pat are watching. Mm -hmm. Got to be proud of the kids. Great family. Another slider swung on and missed. In fact, when Pat and Ray were at the ballpark last homestand, Grandma Pat said, well, today's an easy day to root at the ballpark. Whoever wins, I'm feeling good about it. It didn't matter who won. Humpback liner over the head of Brother Brett. And Aaron is aboard with his first hit and his third in the series. A Charles Lawton line drive. So I'm wondering now if Aaron gets on second base and he runs by Brett if it gives him the old neener 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 to his brother. <laughs> I doubt it. I know. You'd do that, but yeah, yeah. If I if I had a brother playing in the big leagues and I was playing in the big leagues and he was my younger brother, oh, he would never hear the end of it. Aaron Boone is running, and a throw to second base doesn't matter. It's ball four. It's 
Steve Ripley, the plate umpire, didn't indicate right away whether it was a ball or a strike, so Wiki Gonzalez had to make the throw anyway. But it's ball four to Talbensey. Yeah, if the umpire doesn't motion anything, it's a ball. You can see Steve Ripley. I want to know where that pitch was. It looked like a pretty darn good pitch. But Wiki doing the, a good job of just continuing on with the play and wait for him to make the call after. Well, Clement in hot water again. Having trouble with the bottom of the order. Boone, the number seven hitter, singled. Top is the number eight hitter, walk. And now the pitcher, Ron Valona. And Valone gets the bunt down. Wiki Gonzalez to third. Got him. Great play by Wiki. I think they got him. Yeah, he's out. <laughs> Boone, I think he was unsure whether he's out or not. He started to leave the bag and then went back. You see Nevin charging right there in Wiki. The plays in front of him. He knows he's got plenty of time. And a good job by Kevin Nicholson. Good stretch right there. And it's always an advantage in a sacrifice situation to get that lead runner. Nice play by Wiki Gonzalez who has a terrific arm. And here's Pokey Reese up for the second time. He singled and scored in the first inning. In the ninth inning of a game last Sunday at Qualcomm Stadium with Ken Griffey Jr. up, Barry Larkin at first base. Larkin was running. Griffey took a called third strike. Wiki fired to second base and nailed Larkin for a strike him out, throw him out double play. Proved to be huge in that game in the ninth inning as the Padres held on to win it eight to seven. And now he makes another good play. Eddie Tobbins is at second base. Ron Ballone at first, reaching out a fielder's choice. Fly ball to left. Damian Jackson gets a good jump on it and makes the catch. Bouncing around real nice out there in left field. Looks like he's getting some good reads too off the bat. That ball right there in a little bit on Pokey Reese. Big swing and just a little flare. So Damian doing a good job tonight. Going towards the line and making a catch and then coming in nicely on that ball. There he is. He's all over it. Nice two handed grab. Also has to make an adjustment with that big leather he's got out there. He's used to a middle infielder's glove. Well, if he's successful in the outfield, he wouldn't be the first shortstop to move out there and be successful. Robin Yount did the same thing going way back years ago. A fellow named Mickey Mantle came up as a shortstop and then was moved to the outfield. Barry Larkin singled his first time up. Slider whacked into right field. Tomlinson heading for home. Here comes a throw. Nothing on it. He scores. The throw to third. Safe. Well, the Reds regain the lead on Barry Larkin's second hit of the game as they go up two to one. Eric Cohen's did not get much on the throw to the plate. And Sprague cut it off, tried to throw to third, but it was too late. They get Valone. I think Eric might have been caught in between here whether to try to charge this ball or see how he stops right there or charge it and hopefully the ball doesn't bounce over his head. But a clutch hit right there with two outs from the veteran Barry Larkin. And Eddie Tobinzi who had reached on a walk has come in to score the go ahead run. It's two to one Cincinnati. Ron Valone is now at third base. Larkin at first with Ken Griffey Jr. coming up with two outs. He singled in the first Reds run in the first inning. Ball one. And Clement falls behind on him 2 and 0. Oh. Although the Reds are three games below 500, they're in second place back of the Cardinals. They're seven and a half games out, which is pretty good distance to make up against a good ball club. But if these hitters can stay hot, Griffey, Bichette, Casey in particular, Dimitri Young, if they start to get some pitching, I feel they can make a run. Uh-oh, look out. If it's fair, it's gone. It's hooking, and it is foul. A tremendous shot by Griffey, but it is foul. It's 
See Wiki set up in the inside part of the plate. This is a sinker that he wants to go in, but it comes across the plate, and Junior trying to put a little body English on it right there. Well, that's strike one. Man. Way yep. back there in the second deck. Fastball high. Looked like Clement overthrew that pitch, and he goes to a 3 1 count with Griffey. And that's ball four, and the bases are loaded for Dante Bichette. That's the 66 walk Ken Griffey Jr. has received. He leads the league. The second walk allowed by Clement. So Clement in a real jam now. Bichette swinging a hot bat. He hit two home runs in one game last Sunday at Paul Com Stadium, including a home run off Clement, which was his 250th career home run. Well, no, I know you made a point in the pregame show about it, but now in the 28 two thirds innings pitched, his last 28 two thirds, Matt Clement has walked 27. Mm. And be careful here. Bases loaded, two outs. Bichette was called out on strikes his first time up. Slider swung on and missed. Clement has made his best pitches to Bichette. Fell behind on him 2 0, threw him a 2 0 slider for a strike. He swung out and eventually got him looking on a slider in the first inning. And now here he starts him off with a slider. And this ball gets away from Wicky Gonzalez. Here comes Malone down the line to score. That'll probably be a pass ball charged to Wiki Gonzalez. And now it's three to one Reds. See where Wiki set up inside and he misses way off the plate. It'll be a pass ball charged to Wiki Gonzalez. Yeah, you know what? It's a tough pass ball. Wiki's got to make that catch, but also Matt Clement's got to hit his spot more consistently. He was set up on the inside part of the plate. Look at that. Way inside. Oh, he's struggling again. Very wild. He's already walked two. The pass ball that easily could have been wild pitch. He's given the Reds another run. Larkin is now third base. Griffey at second. Two men in scoring position for Bichette. Man, that almost hit Bichette. Yeah. He's diving into that pitch and almost got him. And uh, Matt Clement gets a break right there because that was definitely a ball. Dante trying to protect himself gets the bat in the way and evens the count at two and two. You know, body language says a lot. Obviously, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out Matt Clement is struggling, but just looks kind of lost and kind of unsure of himself right now. He needs to bear down and make a good quality pitch and get out of this mess right here. Slider chopped up the third baseline. Glove by Nevin over to first. Save. Rashad hustles and beats it out. Barry Larkin comes in to score to make it four to one. And Ken Griffey Jr. holding at second base for some reason. That's an infield hit and an RBI for Bichette is 41st of the year. This ball hits turf, and then you can see the ball stay down right there, but it's good hustle by Bichette. Look at how close it is. Good call also by Tim Cheetah over at first base. And you're right. I don't know why Junior's still on second base. With two outs, Nevin's coming in on the play. There's no, no way he's going to get that ball and tag Junior. Should have been at third. Well, the Reds have scored three times in the second. Now lead four to one. Here's Dimitri Young. He takes a strike. Young fly deep to left his first time up. He had a slicing drive toward the left field corner that Damian Jackson caught. Now Griffey is still at second base. Bichette at first. Oh. And a drive to right center field and deep and off the wall. He just missed a home run. Two more runs are in. The throw to third way up the line and Young slides in safely. Uh, Griffey and Bichette score on a triple by Dimitri Young. And it's six to one Cincinnati. I think a good relay throw to third would have had Young. 
this breaking ball right there by Matt Clement looked like it had a little bit of a hump in it. It was not a sharp breaking ball. Therefore giving Dimitri Young a lot of time to react stay back and smoke that ball and you can see the throw by Brett Boone if it's a good throw. Young is definitely out at third base but things not going the Padres way Matt Clement's all over the place and there's action in the Padre bullpen. And Clement walks Casey if, if Brandon Kolb is ready that'll probably do it for Clement. I don't see any indication yet from Greg Booker down the pen that he's ready yet though. It's the third walk given him by Clement all in this inning. You know what Dave Smith he's looking down to see if he's ready but he might want to leave Matt Clement out here to you know, kick it in the rear a little bit and see if he can get out of this mess. And you're kind of in that situation now where if you go to the bullpen you're going to have to use a lot of relievers. Sure. Which is going to deplete the bullpen for the next few days. So maybe you stay with Clement let him try to eat up some innings. Maybe in the process get himself straightened out. Hey believe me folks this is not a fun situation after being in a situation like this personally speaking <laughs> you feel like digging a hole out there and crawling in. you're trying everything you can in your power to get out of this mess. Fouled back by Aaron Boone and it's 0 and 2 Boone single to start this inning. Looks like Aaron Boone swinging it definite ball right there a ball up and out of the strike zone. Slider in the dirt blocked by Wiki Gonzalez. Been a long two innings for Matt Clement. Swing and a miss by Boone. He strikes out for the third out, but the Reds score five times in the second and now leads six to one. Ed Sprague leading off the third inning against Ron Vallone. Let's see if the long inning might affect Vallone. He's been sitting in that dugout for a long time. Red sent 10 men to the plate in the second inning. Sprague flied to left his first time up against Vallone. High fly ball to left and playable for Dimitri Young. Phil Nevin up for the second time. He singled in the first inning. Padres have three hits so far off Ron Vallone. Singles by Eric Owens and Nevin, and an RBI double by Eric Owens in the second. They produce the only Padre run so far. Line foul. Pretty good crowd here at Synergy Field tonight. Their attendance up considerably since the signing of Ken Griffey Jr. Fans are very disappointed though the Reds aren't having a better season. Hit hard speared by Larkin off the turf to first got him. Well, I've got a funny feeling see that number on his chest right there that's going to be another number that's going to be up on the left field wall here at Synergy Field or their new ballpark when they get it. He knows this area so well the shortstop area and uses the turf a la Davy Concepcion. Captain of the Reds Barry Larkin a hometown product went to Moeller High School here in Cincinnati same school that Ken Griffey Jr. went to. Very famous school that's produced a lot of great athletes a lot of football players from Notre Dame. Jerry Faust, the coach at Moeller High for years, went on to coach briefly at Notre Dame football. In fact, Larkin had a, an older brother who played football at Notre Dame. Michael Larkin. One and zero to Brent Boone. Fastball in there, one and one. Boone flied to right to end the first inning. Vallone comes in high and tight two and one. Well Vallone doing a good job after his red leg score six. One in the first five in the second and two quick outs here. Get his team back in the dugout. 
And Boone drills it to center field. Ken Griffey Jr. watches it sail over his head and bounce over the wall for a ground rule double. So all four hits that Brett Boone have had in the series have been extra base hits. Three homers last night and a double tonight. Well, Brett said before the game, if you can be shorter to the ball, that's a good swing right there. Sure, it's aggressive, but under control. Junior gives chase, and because of the turf, bounces over for the double. Tenth double of the year for Brett Boone. Here's Ruben Rivera trying to pick him up. Ball one from Ron Vallone. Rivera 0 for 1. He hit a high fly ball foul down the right field line that Dante Bichette made a terrific play on the second inning. One and one to Ruben. Ruben is a guy I don't think really comes up there with, with too much of a game plan as far as thinking about the situation or trying to sit and look for a particular pitch or think along with the pitcher. We asked him if he was sitting on a pitch last night and he said no I just saw the ball and hit it. Got a fast ball and he hit a three run homer. Ground ball to third Aaron Boone up with it. And he throws out Ruben Rivera. And Eddie Tobbins he takes the first foot for a ball as he leads off the bottom of the third. Tobbins he walked and scored in the second inning. Bouncer to Brett Boone. One down. Matt Clement in two and a third innings has given up six runs, seven hits, and has walked three. Well, let's see if Matt has made an adjustment after thinking about it on the bench in the dugout. He gets a quick out right there. He's got the bottom of the order. You now, Valone is no slouch, but let's see if we can get the pitcher out right here. Valone came up with runners at first and second, and nobody out in the second tried to lay down a bunt. Wookie Gonzalez pounced on it through to third to get the lead runner. Ball one to Valone. And Clement falls behind 2 and 0 on the pitcher. And a strike. Well, the Reds hope to be getting some more pitching help. Pete Harness, one of their best pitchers, is scheduled to pitch tomorrow for the Reds' Louisville farm team at Pawtucket. Or against Pawtucket. He hopes to throw 90 to 100 pitches. And barring any setbacks, he could pitch for the Reds Friday when they're in Arizona. Fallone strikes out. I tell you what, one adjustment Matt Clement has made. I just noticed that at bat. All four seam fastballs. Here it is. See if you can hit it. And he gets the punch out. Third strikeout for Clement. We understand that Pokey Reese left the game because of a sprained ankle. Well, Chris Steins last night started at second base, trying to get Pokey Reese a night off. He had two hits and then pulled a hamstring. Reese had to go in and play for him. And now Pokey gets hurt tonight, and Juan Castro steps in for him. So Castro now hitting out of the leadoff spot. Tapper foul off to the left of home plate. Right now, the best shortstop on this team is probably Pokey Reese. But Barry Larkin does not want to play anything but shortstop. Pokey Reese said he'll do whatever it takes to help the club, so he's willing to play second base. Probably the best second baseman in the league right now. Slider low. Did he go? Yes, says Tim Cheat on the appeal, and that's a strikeout. That's been a problem for both these teams. Starters, whoa, Ron Vallone lets one fly. But starters unable to, to, to give their team many innings. Last night, a case in point for the Reds. Rob Bell was knocked out in the fifth, and Jack McKeon ended up using five relievers. That's why the Reds have three pitchers, actually four pitchers, in the top five in innings pitch for relief pitchers. One and one to Wiki. That's the mentality of Jack McKeon. If you're hot in the bullpen, you're throwing the ball well, 
and you get up, you're going to get in there. He's going to use you. Problem is, right now, the only reliever is really pitching well is Danny Graves, the closer. Scott Williamson, who was rookie of the year last year, gave up a three run homer last night to Ruben Rivera, took the loss. There's been some speculation he might even be sent to AAA. He's been so bad lately. Fastball way inside, three and one to Wiki Gonzalez. High fly ball to right. And Dante Bichette has it. And he smokes one to left field. How about that? Kevin Nicholson's first major league hit is a home run. That's got to be a thrill. Absolutely. What a way to start. First hit in the big leagues, a home run. How are they going to get the ball back, though? Well, always like to get a hitter his first major league uh, hit. Dimitri Young's bartering with the fans out there <laughs> in left field trying to get the ball. See, he knows. I'm sure Kevin Nicholson can't feel his legs right now after rounding the bases. Here it is. Valone falling behind. Fastball, middle in. Let's check out the swing. Very nice. Congratulations, Kevin Nicholson. Looked like Dimitri was out there trying to convince the fans they should throw that ball back. Yeah. Well, nice job by Kevin Nicholson. It's now six to two Reds. Matt Clement hitting for himself. With a count one and one. Way to go, rookie. What a thrill. One and two to Clement. See that cup shaking right there? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going to be feeling pretty good about now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and Clement lines out to the second baseman, Juan Castro. Well, it's protocol, Mel. You hit a home run and you go to the water cooler. You get a cool drink. He knows who to sit next to, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tony has been so good with a lot of these young players talking hitting with him. Eric Owens gives Tony Gwynn a lot of the credit for the season he's having. Even though it's been frustrating for Tony with that bad knee not to be able to play. And Monday he'll be flying back to San Diego to be examined by Dr. Fronick team doctor. There's a good possibility he may have to undergo surgery on that ailing left knee. It'll be the sixth time that he will have surgery on that knee. It just doesn't seem to be getting any better. And it's so frustrating for him because he's really swinging the bat well. He got things started last night in the 10th with a pinch hit double and came out for a pinch runner. And the Padres went on to score three runs on Rivera's home run to win it. But the man can still swing the bat. And Owen, oh, speaking of swinging the bat, he's three for three. Two singles and a double for Eric Owens. Wow. And Valone walks him. Well, it looked like Valone, that last pitch really cut it short. Didn't follow through on his front side. Didn't look too free and easy. Don Gullett, the Reds pitching coach, will go out and see what's going on. So Ed Sprague coming up with runners at first and second and two outs. Eric Owens at second base, Damian Jackson at first. The two fastest runners on the team on the bases. Ground ball up the middle. Larkin with it to second base, just oh. in time. Very close play. Barry Larkin, who's two for two, leading off. Then Ken Griffey Jr. and Dante Bichette to face Matt Clement. He barely made it through two innings. Since then, he's thrown the ball pretty well. He retired to side in order in the third, and he struck out three of the last four batters he's faced. Looks like Matt Clement's gone back to the four seam fastball, being much more aggressive. We'll see how he goes after Larkin. Strike one to Larkin. No, Matt Clement can't underestimate his fastball. Can't give hitters too much credit. Try to, you know, change speeds every night. You got to change speeds, but he's got to have the hitters prove to him that they can hit his fastball. 
And Larkin hits it deep to left field and going, going, gone. Well, Barry Larkin having quite a game. He's three for three. Just walloped his seventh home run of the year. The fireworks go off here at Synergy Field, and the Reds lead seven to two. Well, Matt Clement got ahead. Let's see what he goes to with the second pitch. That yeah, looked like a, just a regular fastball right there, middle in. Well, now he knows that can't throw the four seam fastball right down the middle to Barry Larkin. And Ken Griffey Jr. up for the third time. He takes a strike. He singled in a run, walked, and also scored a run tonight. Just missed a home run earlier, pulling a drive foul down the right field line. Well, both Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Larkin headed for the All Star game. Griffey leads all Major League outfielders in All Star voting, and Larkin is a leader among shortstops. Bounce foul by the first base. Ground ball right side and Brett Boone with a leaping throw. Got him. Griffey can't believe it nor can the first base coach Dave Collins. Griffey is furious. He fires the batting helmet down. Terrific play by Brett Boone. And you know he was screened by Kevin Nicholson also coming across. Watch Nicholson. He can't get it. So Booney's got to make the backhand off balance throw. Oh he beat the ball first of all. Whoa. It's not even a question of him coming off the bag. He beat the ball. Griffey will be even madder when he sees the replay. It looked like the Padres caught a break. Griffey is out and Dante Bichette up. Swing at a first pitch slider from Clement. Another slider. This one in the dirt. It's one and one to Bichette, who had an infield hit and drove in a run in the second inning. Reds leading seven to two. Well, Mel Houston lost again, thirteen to four. Well, I mean, he fired a couple of their coaches. What are they going to do next? Wow. Line drive right back to Clement. Chunk it towards home plate and defend yourself on the liner back there. Matt Clement doing a good job just getting the glove up there. It's amazing what the body will do when you got a fastball coming at you about 90 miles an hour. Who normally is a better hitter from the left side of the plate, as most switch hitters are because they face more right handed pitching. But this year is average considerably higher batting right handed. From the left side, hitting 249, from the right side, 338. But has a lot more at bats left handed. Struck him out. Phil Nevin leading off for the Padres in the fifth. Ron Ballone misses with the first two pitches. Nevin is single and grounded to short. Fastball low, 3 0. Padres need some base runners and then they need the big blow. Get right back in this game. Three and one to Phil Nevin. And Valone walks the leadoff batter to start the fifth. Ball four and a dandy. The fourth walk given up by Valone. And he takes a strike. 
So Ron Fallone back to work with a count 0 and 1 to Brett Boone. Nevin at first. Nobody out. Reds leading 7 to 2. Strike two. Change up outside. One and two to Brett Boone. Grounded to first. Sean Casey fires to second. Larkin back to first. Not in time. So Nevin is forced to second base. Brett Boone reaches on a fielder's choice. Ron Vallone, for the most part, been pretty much a guy who will go about six innings. His longest outing this year has been seven and a third. That was last Saturday in San Diego. High drive, center field and deep. Back goes Ken Griffey Jr. to the warning track, to the wall, and it's gone. Home run for Ruben Rivera. His second home run in two nights, and that cuts the Reds' lead to 7-4. to four. The eighth home run of the year for Ruben. And that'll get the Reds' bullpen out. Yeah, Malone's been struggling lately. I mean, with his location, falling behind, that was a 1-0 pitch. And off the bat, the trajectory of that ball it looks like it's going to be a long fly ball to center, but Junior just keeps going and going. Runs out. That was a bolt. And Vallone misses badly with his first pitch to Wicky Gonzalez. So the Padres are back in this game, down by only three runs. And Wicky pops it up. Aaron Boone coming in. Two outs. Brandon Kolb is throwing again the Padre bullpen, so it's going to be it for Clement. Ground ball to third. Boone over to first in time. Sean Casey takes a strike. Bruce Boshi trying to get one more inning out of Matt Clement. They were going to pinch hit for him if his spot came up in the fifth. But he's due to lead off the sixth, so this will be it for him. Casey tonight has fly to left and walk. I'm glad I brought and up you the know pigs. what? You know, no, nobody knows what I'm talking about. No, and you you make a great point because WK. Remember Les Nesman? He always gave yes. the pork reports. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, in all sincerity, is uh, known for their uh, slaughterhouses. Pigs and stuff like that. Well, like Chicago is known for its cattle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a ticket. So they have these pigs on just about every corner. As Mark said, they're going to auction them off for charity. Really beautiful pigs. <laughs> no, that sounds like doesn't make much sense, but they're all painted up and decorated. Yeah. There's one in front of a bank that was dressed up like a banker, another one in front of the courthouse that had. You know, like a wig, like he was a a judge. Judge, yeah. Barrister. Another one's dressed up like a Mercedes Benz. The back end of it has wheels, and it's like a Mercedes. I guess you really have to be here to appreciate it. Well, maybe we can get a camera crew out and get a few shots of it. Have to pay them overtime. Forget it. Unless they want to do it on their own. On the way to the park tomorrow. Aaron Boone up with one out in the fifth. On the way to the park. Base hit. Second hit of the game for Aaron Boone. He's two for three with two singles. Eddie Tobinsey, 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Takes a fastball high from Matt Clement. Tobinsey last year had one of the best seasons ever by a Cincinnati catcher. A guy who would hit just 267 lifetime in his career going into the season. High drive down the left field line. Damian Jackson on the run and whoa, a lot of white showing, but he makes the catch. Oh. 
This is known in the trade as a snow cone. Looks like that ball hits him in the heel of the glove almost in the uh, not in the pocket but down by the palm and then it bounces up. And lucky for Damien that he's got that long glove the extra leather out there. He hangs on for the out. And Valone chases a high fastball. High chop here comes Kevin Nicholson over to first got him nice play. Been an interesting road trip for Brandon Monday took the loss in Arizona walking in the winning run. Walk Steve Finley to force in Danny Bautista with a winning run and Bruce Bochy brought him back two days later on Wednesday and he pitched two scoreless innings although he did walk a couple. Facing the top of the order Juan Castro Barry Larkin and Ken Griffey Jr. in the bottom of the sixth. One and one to Castro who replaced the injured Pokey Reese who left the game with a sprained ankle. And he struck out his only time up tonight. Well Matt Clement's ERA is going to climb a little higher in five innings of work he gave up seven runs on nine hits walked three and struck out four. All seven of those runs were earned. Into right center Eric Owen sliding and can't make the play. Ruben Rivera backing him up gets it back in in a hurry. So Owen's trying to make the shoestring catch unable to do so but Ruben did a good job of getting in behind him. I think Eric might have lost this in the lights a little bit. Let's take a look right there kind of pulls up. And then after the play he was looking up at the ring of lights here. Well, holds him to a single right there Ruben getting the ball back in. Now Castro leads off the sixth inning with a single and here's Barry Larkin who's had a good night two singles and a home run. His average up to 317. Cole misses with the first pitch to Larkin. One ball, one strike. Brandon Cole, just one of several youngsters who got a chance to pitch in the big leagues this year because of the injuries. Padres have eight pitchers on the disabled list. That is amazing. And some key pitchers too. Steve Montgomery hasn't pitched a game. He's been out on a rehab assignment. He's supposed to be the setup guy. Carlton Lower, who was supposed to be in the rotation, hasn't pitched at all. Woody Williams on the comeback trail. Pitched very well his last time out. Five innings, striking out ten. Rodney Myers is out for the year. Sterling Hitchcock out for the year. Donnie Wall, Brian Boring are both sideline. Randy Myers also out all year. And a base hit to left. Brandon Cole a little shaky, giving up back to back singles to Juan Castro and Barry Larkin to set the table for Ken Griffey Jr. Well, even though Barry Larkin was fooled right there, he just kind of swatted at that pitch. It's elevated. Brandon Cole has to get that pitch down. Then it would have been a nice grounder to the left side. Well, Barry Larkin is four for four tonight. Let's take a look at the pitch. A slider, middle in. And Barry just gets the head out and punches it to the left side. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. Cole going right at him with a four seamer. He throws real hard. He'll get it up there around 93, 94 miles an hour, and he blows Griffey away. Well, he wanted in the inner half. He misses with location, but up just enough for Junior to offer at it and cannot catch up with the fastball. That's a big out. Now the double play is in order with first and second. Ground ball, but it's through for a base hit. Castro heading home. And it's 8 to 4 Cincinnati. Well, Kolb got the ground ball that he wanted, but it was right up the middle between the shortstop and second baseman. And Bichette is aboard with his second hit and picks up his second RBI of the game. 
Well, Bichette. Sure, he's got power, but he also can shorten up the swing a little bit. Watch this swing. It's down. He hits down on it and utilizes the turf right here, just out of the reach of Nicholson at short. And the Reds pad the lead now, eight to four. Still only one out, and Dimitri Young up. Young tripled in two runs back in the second inning. Is only hitting the game. Goes after the first pitch and whacks it foul. Barry Larkin is now at second base. Dante Bichette at first. Eight runs, 12 hits for the Reds. Four runs, nine hits for the Padres. And that just missed one and one. Ground ball to Ed Sprague. He fires to second. The throw back to first. Nicole drops the ball. Well, the Padre is unable to turn the double play. Barry Larkin goes to third. Bichette is out at second. But Young reaches first on a fielder's choice. Well, Ed Sprague gets the big hop, spins towards the glove hand side. I thought he might have been safe at second. Let's see if he's off the bag. Oh, yeah. Very close. And a good turn by Kevin. And Brandon can't hang on to the ball. Well, runners at first and third, two outs as Sean Casey comes up. Casey 0 for 2 with a walk. Ground ball off the glove of Ed Sprague down the right field line. Larkin is in to score. Young heading for third. And it's 9 to 4 Cincinnati. That'll be an error charge to Sprague. Padres 71st error of the year. Bouncer to third. Phil Nevin up with it. And he makes the play to get Aaron Boone. First pitch, a high slider for a ball to Boone. It was flight out, doubled, reached on a fielder's choice and scored a run. Bouncer up the middle. Larkin fumbling with it and can't make the play. And Boone is safe at first. And Ruben Rivera up. He belled at a two run homer in the fifth at dead center field. Off Ron Vallone. I mean, that's a play Barry Larkin's got to make. Brown ball in the hole. Larkin has this one. Fires to second. Just in time. And Boone is forced at second as Ruben Rivera reaches on a fielder's choice. Padres are two and two so far on the trip. Barry Larkin's been busy. Shovels it to the second baseman Castro over to first, not in time. Uh, Ricky Gonzalez safe at first, but Ruben Rivera is out at second. You can see that's one of the things you have to be concerned about here is the bounce on the turf and then the dirt. But Barry Larkin's used to that. Good hustle by Wiki down the line. Let's take a look. I thought he was out. But another break for the pods. Maybe they can get some going here, a little two-out lightning. Kevin Nicholson will be up there left-handed this time. Against the right-hander descends. Nicholson a switch hitter. Swings at the first pitch. Bounced up the middle. Larkin with a great stop. Well, it's a base hit for Nicholson. Kevin Nicholson picking up his first two major league hits today a home run and now an infield hit good effort by Larkin we've seen Barry Larkin even though he's been in the big leagues 15 years he still has some decent range up the middle right there he's gone to his right he's gone to his left 
he had the idea if he could find the handle right there to spin and throw to second base but he could not hang on. And takes a strike from Elmer descends. Tuesday night he hit two home runs and then Wednesday night the pinch hit home run. And another home run last night. One of five the Padres hit last night. Slider low. Klesko now has 15 home runs. He's tied with Phil Nevin for the club lead in home runs. Chopper up the middle. Larkin gets to this one. Whirls, fires, got him. Great play by Barry Larkin. And a little problem with a long ball. First pitch to Eddie Tobinsy is a ball. Almanzar in only 38 innings has given up eight home runs. And he's 2 0 to Eddie Tobinsy. Elmer descends the pitcher due up next. And then Juan Castro, the second baseman. Of the nine runs the Reds have scored, Matt Clement allowed seven. Brandon Kolb gave up two. Fly ball into center field. Ruben Rivera in to make the catch. Strike one. Slider belted off Almanzar. That's going to be a base hit. Well, like Almanzar was kind of twisted around on his follow through and really was not in good fielding position to come up with that ball. And Descends beats it out. Yeah, Carlos sometimes does that, falls towards first base. Let's see. Yeah, you can see his front shoulder was towards home plate right there. Could not get his glove around in time. And even though that ball went into foul territory, it hits a player within fair territory. That's a fair ball. That's the 13th Cincinnati hit, and the first hit of the year for Elmer Descends. Fly ball into center field. Ruben Rivera getting a good jump on it. He rarely gets a bad jump. Ball's carrying tonight, too. That ball didn't sound like it was hit well off the bat of Castro and a big ovation for Barry Larkin who is four for four tonight with three singles and a home run if he gets another hit he would tie his career high actually would break his would set a new career high he's never had a five hit game. Strike one to Larkin. Well, Larkin playing pretty well this year in the last year of his contract. He's 36 years of age. Big local favorite from Cincinnati. The Reds are going to be faced with a tough decision as to whether or not to give him the kind of money that he wants to keep him. He reportedly is seeking a $27 million deal over three years. Averaging out to $9 million a year. They've got a young shortstop who was up earlier this year when Larkin was hurt. Gookie Dawkins, highly regarded. Fastball high, one and two. And a drive to center field in deep. This has a chance. Way back. Gone. Barry Larkin with the first five hit game of his major league career and he's hit his second home run of the game. 
And the Reds have blown this one open and now lead 11 to 4. The fans want Larkin to take a curtain call. Channing Barry Barry. They want him to come out and take a bow. And here he comes. Carlos Almanzar tries to get in with the fastball, leaves it middle in. And Barry going to the deepest part of the ballpark. The ball's traveling well, but he smokes this ball. That's a five for five night. Larkin with three singles and two home runs. He scored four times and he's driven in three tonight. You know what the thing I love about Barry Larkin? He knows he's been there before and he's a true professional. I mean, look at him just sitting on the bench. He's supposed to do that. Brown ball to Ed Sprague. He feeds Almanzar at first for the out. But what a night for Barry Larkin, the Reds captain, five for five, the first five hit game of his career. Barry Larkin, first five hit game of his great major league career. Eric Owens leading off for the Padres in the eighth, bounces it to second. Juan Castro throws him out. Good gas. That takes care of Martin. Not too happy with that at bat. Well, the sense can go with the two seam sinker and then he can blow the four seam fastball by it. And that's a great location right there. Up around the belt and on the fists. Second strikeout for Elmer descends. And Ed Sprague up. Sprague getting a start tonight at first base. Has gone 0 for 4 and has also committed an error. He's mainly in there for his bat, but he's handled quite a few defensive problems at first base. He's now committed seven errors. Of course, his real position is third base, but that's occupied by Phil Nevin. And they tried him briefly in the outfield, but he was not real comfortable out there. So unless Nevin takes a day off, first base is about the only place you can put him. Popped up into shallow center field. Juan Castro out to make the catch. And the Padres are down in order. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Dante Bichette whacks the first pitch on one hop to Phil Nevin. One pitch, one out in the eighth. Now Carlos Almanzar gave up a home run to Barry Larkin in the seventh inning. Almanzar now has given up nine homers in 39 and a third inning. You know, he's hot and cold. Remember, during the start of the season, Carlos was just on fire. He was breaking out that slider, breaking out that sinker, just mowing everybody down. Then he gave up those three nights in a row, three run shot home runs. 1 0 to Dimitri Young. Ground ball to short. Kevin Nicholson feels it cleanly and throws out Young. Well, I like what I see in Kevin Nicholson. Remember his first night in last night, he went to his right into the hole, short way for a force out, field his choice at second base. He made a nice play charging in tonight. And he also hit his first major league home run and has an infield hit. He's gone two for three at the plate, scored twice. Good night for the rookie. John Casey up with two outs. The base is empty in the eighth and takes the first pitch low from Carlos Almanzar. Casey reached on an Ed Sprague error in the sixth inning. It's the Padres' 71st error in 72 games. Ground ball up the middle. Dickelson dives but can't come up with it. And Casey has his first hit in the 15th Cincinnati hit tonight. Third hit allowed by Carlos Almanzar. He got his ground ball, but ball hit hard on the turf right up the middle. Chance for Aaron Boone. Boone's been swinging the bat pretty well. Two for five last night and two for four so far tonight. Foul ball. Boone has now hit safely in nine of his last 11 games, including six two hit games. Includes tonight.
pulled foul over near the Padre dugout, and it's 0-2 to Boone, who, like his brother Brett, played college ball at USC. Slider fouled off. The Padres have not had too much success in Cincinnati this year. They came in here in May and were swept in a three game series. They swept three from the Reds last week at Qualcomm Stadium. The Padres won last night, but are trailing tonight 11 to 4 in the eighth. One and two. Strike three. That's all for the Reds at the end of eight innings. Cincinnati 11, the Padres four. Swing and a miss by Phil Nevin, leading off the ninth against Elmer DeSens, who's done a terrific job. Three scoreless innings. He has given up three hits, struck out two, walked none, and is in position to pick up a save. Sounds like you're getting choked up just talking about it. That's right. He has pitched really well, though. Very aggressive. I like this kid. Good fastball. Good slider. He works fast. And this bullpen needed an effort like this. Popped up. Eddie Tobinsy coming back. Oh, he makes the play. What a play by Tobinsy. That ball had a lot of backspin on it and just came back. Looked like he had to battle a fan with a glove to make the catch. Yeah, as soon as the ball is hit straight up as a catcher, you turn your back to the infield. He finds his way back to the railing. What a great effort by Eddie. Concentrating on the railing, on the fans. Hammered, but it's going to go foul. A towering shot to left. Wow, where did that thing land? In the upper deck. Yeah, the red section. Up in the red seats. Just to the left of the fair pole. But it's a long strike. Slider blooped into center field. Ken Griffey Jr. makes the basket catch. Say hey. Nice play by Jr. Heck. The score is 11 to 4. The Reds are winning. And yet it's a darn good effort. Full run right there by Ken Griffey Jr. He could have let that one drop in there. Nice catch for the second out. Two down in the ninth, and Ruben Rivera. As Elmer descends, tries to finish off the Padres. And Ruben comes through with a base hit to right, his second hit of the game. He got a home run in the fifth inning. Ground ball up the middle, and Wiki keeps it going. Ruben Rivera heading for third. The throw by Griffey. Oh. Almost. I don't that. know what he's doing there. Yeah, that's. Ruben was not running full speed. He was about three quarter speed when he ran second base and tried to go to third. Griffey almost threw him out for the third out. But the Padres are still alive, barely, with two outs in the ninth. Wiki coming through with the knock and junior wants to make that last out of the game at third. Luckily for Ruben and the Padres it's not made. Kevin Nicholson up with runners at first and third and two outs. I don't care how bad you're getting beat you don't want to get thrown out like that to end the ball game. That would have been embarrassing. Well, Griffey is second in the league in assists. Actually tied with Steve Finley of Arizona with seven. Almost picked up another one. Brian Giles, San Diego kid playing for the Pirates, leads the league with nine. But Griffey's such a great offensive player, you sometimes take his defense for granted. He's won ten gold gloves. Slider low. Good gas from descends and it's two and two. 
Padres are down to their last strike. And Nicholson makes the Reds fans wait a little longer. I want to see him go deep from the left side. He did it from the right side. How about the left side, Kev? Slider grounded into right field. Ruben Rivera's in to score to make it 11 to 5. And a three hit game for Kevin Nicholson in his second major league game. So Nicholson, three for four tonight. Also walked once. And now Corey DeHaan will bat for the pitcher. Well, DeHaan trying to keep this two out rally going. Descends retired the first two hitters, and Ruben Rivera singled. Wicky Gonzalez singled with Ruben going to third. And Nicholson with a base hit to drive in a run. The first that Elmer Descends has given up tonight. Foul ball, strike one to Corey DeHaan, who's hitting just 188. Padres think eventually DeHaan's going to be a pretty good major league player. Already his defense is of major league caliber. Good base runner, but he's not quite ready with the bat. But he's working very hard, trying to cut down on his swing, shorten it up a little bit. Showed him earlier talking with Tony Gwynn. He's trying to soak up knowledge wherever he can get it. He's a real good kid. 0-2 oh, to DeHaan. Corey even said he's going to a heavier bat to make him shorten up his swing a little bit so he's not quite so long. Fastball just missed. One and two to DeHaan, who is two for 13 as a pinch hitter. Line foul. And DeHaan grounds it foul. I would think Elmer Descends got to be getting tired. This is his fourth inning of work. Yeah, there's a excellent chance, I would think. He's not going to be used tomorrow. Giving up six hits, <laughs> but only one run. And he strikes out, and that's the ball game. Well, with Barry Larkin leading the way with his first five hit game of his major league career, Cincinnati Reds have beaten the Padres to even the series in one game apiece. Final score tonight, Synergy Field in Cincinnati, the Reds 11 and the Padres 5.